Hello boys and girls. Welcome to Library Live with um, me, Mrs. Hopkins, your librarian and tech teacher. Um, today we're going to be reading some books from Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss has written a bunch of books. He is the author and the illustrator and um, he's famous for writing kind of um, books that rhyme and, and he's famous for making up words. Now a lot of people think that Cat in the Hat was his first book but it was not. It's one of his most popular books and Green Eggs and Ham is also one of his very popular books but it was not the first book that he wrote. He wrote the first book and to think I saw it on Mulberry Street and I read somewhere that he wrote this book while he was on a, a ship and that the rocking of the ship help him, helped him to make his rhyming pattern. I'll be telling you some more facts on another day about Dr. Seuss. Um, this one's called And to Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street by Dr. Seuss. When I leave home to walk to school, Dad always says to me, Marco, keep your eyelids open and see what you can see. But when I tell him where I've been and what I think I've seen, he looks at me and sternly says, your eyesight's much too keen. That word keen means sharp, means he can see really well. Stop telling such outlandish tales. Stop turning minnows into whales. Outlandish means um, elaborate or big tales. And it sounds to me like he's not really telling the truth. Now, what can I say when I get home today? All the long way to school and all the way back, I've looked and I've looked and I've kept careful track. But all that I've noticed except my own feet was a horse in a wagon on Mulberry Street. And there's the horse in the wagon. There's nothing to tell of. They won't, that won't do, of course. Just a broken down wagon that's drawn by a horse. That can't be my story. That's only a start. I'll say that a zebra was pulling the cart. And you'll notice that he has a lot of rhyme. Start and cart. And what is the story that no one can beat when I say that I saw it on Mulberry Street? And again, there's the rhyme. Street and beat. Yes, the zebra is fine, but I think it's a shame. Such a marvelous beast with a cart that's so tame. The story would really be better to hear if the driver I saw were a charioteer. A golden blue chariot, something to meet, rumbling like thunder down Mulberry Street. And you can hear the rhyming words. No, it won't do at all. A zebra's too small. A reindeer is better. It's he's fast and he's fleet and he'd look mighty smart on Mulberry Street. Hold on a minute, there's something wrong. A reindeer hates the way it feels to pull a thing that runs on wheels. He'd much hap he'd be much happier instead if he could pull a fancy sled. Hmm, a reindeer in a sleigh. Say, anyone could think of that. Jack or Fred or Joe or Nat. Say, even Jane could even think of that. But it isn't too late to make one little change. A sleigh and an elephant. There's something strange. I'll pick one with plenty of power and size. A blue one with plenty of fun in its eyes. And then, just to give him a little more tone, have a Raja with rubies perched high on the throne. Say, that makes a story that no one can beat when I say that I saw it on Mulberry Street. But now I don't know. It still doesn't seem right. An elephant pulling a thing that's so light would whip it around in the air like a kite. But he'd look simply grand with a great big brass band. Notice the rhyming words. That's what Dr. Seuss liked to do. And sometimes he would even make up words to make it rhyme. Not so much in this book, but uh, his other books. And this is the first book that he wrote. A band that's so good should have someone to hear it, but it's going so fast that it's hard to keep near it. I'll put on a trailer. I know they won't mind. If a man 
sits and listens while hitched on behind. But now it's fair, it's fair what I've done. I bet those wagons weigh more than a ton. That's really too heavy a load for one beast. I'll give him some helpers he'll need to at least. Now, what would you see on Mulberry Street if you were Dr. Seuss and you wrote this book? But now what worries me is this. Mulberry Street runs into bliss. Unless there's something I can fix up, there'll be an awful traffic mix-up. It takes the police to do the trick to guide them through where the traffic's thick. It takes police to do the trick. They never crash now. They'll race at top speed with Sergeant McVaughney himself in the lead. Look what um, chaos is there now at the corner of Mulberry and Bliss. The mayor is there and he thinks it's grand and he raises his hat as they dash in the stand. The mayor is there and the aldermen too, all waving big banners are red, white, and blue. And what is a story that no one can beat when I say that I saw it on Mulberry Street? With the roar of this motor, and an airplane appears and dumps out confetti while everyone cheers. And that makes a story that's really not bad, but it still could be better. Suppose that I add. What would you add to the story to um, make more chaos? A Chinese boy, a big magician who eats with sticks, doing tricks. A ten-foot beard that needs a comb. No time for more. I'm almost home. I swung around the corner and dashed through the gate. I run up the steps and I feel simply great. For I had a story that no one could beat and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. But Dad said quite calmly, just draw up your stool and tell me the sights on the way home from school. There was so much to tell I just couldn't begin. Dad looked at me sharply and pulled at his chin. He frowned at me sternly from there in his seat. Was there nothing to look at, no people to greet? Did nothing excite you or make your heart beat? Nothing, I said, growing red as a beat, but a plain horse and a wagon on Mulberry Street. Now, we know that that is actually what he saw, but in his imagination, he saw much more, didn't he? What would you see on Mulberry Street? By Dr. Seuss, his very first book. Happy reading.